Hey guys, Ron Bond, Bondo Bill Construction here today. Um, I'm making a shoot for pouring concrete, guys, because I priced them out. And uh, the 16 foot aluminum screed is like 800 bucks. So, and I need one pretty quick. I gotta have it shipped to my house. So I'm gonna take a culvert pipe, cut it in half. And I only paid 200 bucks for this culvert pipe. I'm gonna make three different screeds out of it. So that's what I'm up to. Check it out. So here's the culvert pipe, guys. And uh, it's a 20 footer, so I'm gonna cut it in half to 18 inch. Oops, sorry about that. It's supposed to be an 18 inch. Yep, 18 inch. So you could probably use a 16 inch, but my buddy here had a um, had some culvert pipes that he sold me one. Gave me a good deal, 200 bucks for this thing. So I'm gonna cut this bad boy in half. I'm gonna use these. There's a line in these culvert pipes, like a mold line, where they seam them together. And I'm gonna cut it right there. Actually, I already started cutting it, but I'm gonna cut it right in half, and then I'm gonna cut. So that'll make one 20 footer and well, two 20 footers, and then I'm gonna take the one 20 footer and cut it into a 12 and an eight. So I'll have a 20, a 12, and an eight inch or foot long screed. Yeah, not a screed. Shoot, not a screed. A shoot for concrete because we gotta shoot one of these jobs that we're doing. I can't get a pump, so I'm gonna shoot it through this pipe. That's what we're doing. So guys, I got my eight footer. That one there is pretty rigid. Eight footer doesn't seem to flex much if you put some weight in it. The 12, it's got a little bit of flex in it. <clears throat> I put it up here and kind of push on it. It'll bow. It'll kind of buckle. See that? It'll actually buckle like right here. It's starting to buckle. And did it here too where I pushed on it. So I think it needs some stability. I'm thinking like a two, maybe a, just a two by four along the edges here. Maybe screwed into there, a two by something. Or a piece of metal. <clears throat> Not sure. This 20 footer is a monster. This thing's huge. That's gonna be really heavy. I'm not sure about this one. Pretty heavy. So I don't know if I'll be able to handle this. It'll be hard to move around and stuff. I guess I could move it around with the tractor, but. So stay tuned. I'm gonna figure something out here. Might not be tonight, it'll probably be tomorrow. I'll mess around with these things a little more. See what I can come up with. We gotta use these on um, Monday, we gotta pour. So I'm gonna be using these chutes to pour with and try them out, so. I gotta figure out how to make them more rigid first. We're in the shop tonight. Building this uh, chute and we had to build these funky saw horses to hold this bad boy. It's 20 feet long. Right, Biscuit? So that's how she's gonna be. The concrete's gonna flow right down through there. Pretty cool. Pretty funky. It's not as heavy as it looks either. Definitely strong. I put a bunch of hemlock supports on some two by fours and that's what we ended up with. I think we're gonna fill these holes with spray foam so we don't get concrete in there and make it all heavy and get water in there and stuff. We'll just zap some spray foam down in there. Redneck ingenuity. Yeah, redneck ingenuity. That's how we're gonna try her tomorrow morning. It's 8.30 at night tonight. We just finished it up. We're gonna be pouring concrete in the morning.
Hey guys, Bondo here. So we're pouring a 40 by 90 pole barn here, guys, and uh, we're doing this. I'm going to do three videos on this job. Uh, we're doing it in three different pours here. So this is the back 30 feet, and uh, I made this chute up, as you see on the video. Um, we made this chute so that we could reach back 30 feet without messing with the tubing, and I didn't want to pay for a pump. I bid this job about a year ago, so um, concretes went up and uh, just wasn't really enough room in the budget for the pump, so we uh, decided to try this out. I didn't want to wheel all this concrete, obviously, and uh, like I said, the pumps pumps about a thousand bucks every time I run it, so um, in our area, even a trailer pump's going to cost you pretty much a thousand dollars, so um, this was my solution here, and man, it worked really good, guys. Um, and we didn't pour really soupy concrete either. This is a, this is about a five and a half slump concrete, six at the top, and uh, you know it worked really good. That that shoots 20 feet long, so that moved that concrete way back to the back there, and we didn't disturb our tubing or nothing. So um, we just had to be careful when we picked it up and set it back down that we didn't set it on the tubing. So. We were real careful with that but we just moved this thing around and we dumped um this this first truck i think it had uh like nine yards on it i think this first pour was uh yeah it was this first pour was like 17 and a half yards so um, this first truck that we dumped out um that was a nine yard truck we're pouring uh 3500 pound concrete today guys with it's got it's got some poly heat in it which is a which is a water reducer it's like a super plasticizer which actually will make your concrete a little bit um, more workable but it's not super super wet i don't pour concrete that's real wet it looks like cow manure when it comes out so the concrete i pour is pretty heavy you know it doesn't flow as fast as some of the other concretes that you see on the internet when they pour them real wet um, that's in my opinion that's not really that good especially in a, a building like this um, so we don't we don't wet it down that much guys so I can't just hook a chute to the concrete truck chute because it's too heavy it'll uh, actually it can break their chute they don't like to hook it to it unless it's real water and it's gonna run kind of like water down the trough or this thing you seen that uh shoot that we made up when we put the concrete in it it was pretty heavy it kind of pushed straight down into the foam because it held a lot of concrete so here we are guys uh putting in wet screeds um wet pads there with a 16 foot um, um aluminum screed there and then once our wet pads are in i got a marshalltown power screed here i'm just screeding off the top um, that's my son there, Big Biscuit, we call him. The big guy, he's uh, raking, and so is my buddy Chris. They're, he's raking. And uh, I call these guys puddlers, guys. They're just raking concrete down for us. And we set the elevation on this with a laser screed, or a laser level. And uh, we just put little wet pads in there. You'll see me now and again um, holding this the story stick. And making a little wet pad and putting an X on it, and that's where our grade is. And then we just strike off across those, and we make our uh, I call them wet pads, and that's what we run the power screed on. So uh, here's my son, Big Biscuit. He's gonna bow float this thing and uh, knock it down flat while we uh, continue pouring it. Now here's the second truck pulling in, guys. We were able to 
put three shoots on him and we took our uh, homemade contraption of a shoot out of there and the first truck driver was nice enough to wash it off for us so that was awesome he hosed it all off while we poured out the second truck so um, once we got that first truck in we could reach it really good with the second truck so that that uh, shoot right there just saved me a thousand bucks on this first pour so um, and the way we did this too guys we put the tubing down in the first pour and I had to get it back to the manifold because I couldn't put the tubing in the second part yet so the manifolds kind of in the middle of the building so uh, on part two when I do part two of this video on this barn you'll see how we hooked in the tubing on the second section we're able to put our uh, our tubing coming up out of the slab so you know that's how we did it so that, of course we couldn't drive on the tubing that's going to be in the second part and then we did the same thing on the third part so if you stay with this video after we pour this concrete um, you'll see how we did the tubing because as soon as we got done with the concrete guys we had time we were waiting on it it was a it was a pretty cool day so we just uh, I kept all the guys there and we just started throwing foam board down and we put our wire mesh down and we tied up um, another uh, 1200 feet of tubing because we run a one foot of tubing per square foot of building area so this area that we're working on right now is uh, 1200 square feet so we got right around 1200 feet of tubing in there so um, like I said stay with the video you'll see kind of how we do the tubing and uh, I got a bunch of videos on how to put that tubing down guys you can do it yourself it's uh, pretty easy to do you can save a lot of money doing it yourself so that's me in the red shirt guys I'm just buzzing this off with uh, the Marshalltown shockwave there power screed I like that unit um, you guys that watch my channel know I use that thing all the time um, sometimes we'll even screed it off quick by hand with a um, a 16 footer and then I'll jump right back on it and hit it with that just because it sets the stones down it makes in my opinion it's easier to finish the slab after you power screed it because all the aggregate gets knocked down a little bit deeper so you get some uh, easier to get the cream up onto the top so here uh, we were just magging off the edges here guys and here's our 16 footer like I said here we are me and uh, Chris are putting in wet pads here that's what we're doing we're putting our wet pads in so that we can got our that's our gauge that uh, shockwave will ride right across these wet pads guys it doesn't even sink in so especially with the concrete we pour this you know being a relatively decent slump concrete that uh, you can see that machine will just ride right across the top of it and you can screed fairly wet concrete with that thing uh, like I don't or wet concrete but you can screed real wet concrete with that I've seen it before so here I am I'm just like I said knocking it down I got my puddlers behind me here we're just working our way across um, this truck driver did a really nice job placing the concrete for us even though everybody's kind of standing in his way including myself right here and uh, that makes it hard on the driver when you're standing in the way and he's trying to fill in the concrete for you so we always mag float around the outside edge guys that's what we're doing here we got our mag floats just sitting around the perimeter and that's me and Chris again just knocking it down with the 16 foot screed that's my grandson keeps poking his head in front of the camera Ethan he's a goofball you'll see him pop his head in and out in front of the camera so we just hand screeded that and I'm going back over it with the power screed like I said earlier in the video. Um, Big Biscuit's laying it down with the bow float. Doing a good job there. So that worked out good. And we're just finishing things up here. The driver pulled back in. Filling the rest of it in and um, we had enough concrete which is always good. You guys that pour concrete all the time, you know, you're always a little nervous at the end to make sure you have enough concrete. I think we had about a half a yard left over which is fine uh, I usually end up ordering a little bit extra so I don't run out because it costs you a lot of money to get it like even a wheelbarrow full of concrete they're gonna want to send you a yard or two sometimes two yards so here we just uh, we didn't want to put too much in so 
pulled the driver back in a couple times and uh, just cleaned his chute out. I think we ended up needing just a little bit more here and he pulled back in, cleaned the rest out. I'd like to get his, there's Ethan again, being a goof in front of the camera. So here we are guys, the guy's cleaning up the tools a little bit and I'm just finishing up. Gonna buzz the rest of this out with this power screed. And then, like I said, stay with us and we'll show you how to put some tubing down for the next section. That's what we're going to do here in a little bit. And then at the end of the video, I'll do some power troweling, guys. You can see how we power troweled this piece of concrete, this first section, too. There was a bunch of pipes sticking out of this job. It kind of made it a little bit of a pain on this first section, but... The second section um, didn't have as many pipes sticking out of it. And the third section we got no pipes sticking out of it, so I can't wait to do that. Right now we've as I'm making this video, I got two sections of this barn done, so um, I'm gonna make the video on the second section. And then we're gonna pour this third section and finish it off Saturday. Right here there's a drain guys and I'm sweeping it with a I just got a little two by four and it had about a half inch pitch to it. Um, little utility room they wanted to drain in there so that's what I'm doing there I'm kind of swir swirling around that drain just making that pitch kind of getting it set there so here we are guys uh, putting the wire mesh down we got the concretes all in and I got all my guys here so like I said we're just gonna put wire mesh and tubing down while we wait for the concrete to dry and uh, I'm only gonna stay with one other guy and finish this concrete all these guys will take off after we get the tubing down all my guys and I don't need all these guys to finish that slab because it's only 1200 feet so we put the um, wire mesh down we actually tied the wire mesh to itself so that it, it uh, you keep the grid nice on it because you want to keep your grid lines all lined up good so that we use the grid they're on six inch squares and we use that grid to tie the tubing down um, because this tubing wants to be laid at every one foot so like I said earlier, you got one square foot of tubing per foot of building. This section, second section here is also, I, this ended up a little bit bigger than the first section. It was like 31 feet, so I had just over 1,200 feet of tubing in this section too. My grandson, I had him cutting the zip ties off, so you'll see him there. Um, I gave him a little pair of cutters and he was snipping off the zip ties. But he actually got bored. He said, what can I do to... I want to work, Grandpa. What can I do? So I said, I'll give you a job. You got to cut all these little zip ties off. So that's what he's doing there. You can see him. He looks like a little frog jumping around with the video on uh, fast forward. Anyways, guys, uh, that's what we're doing. We're putting down the tube. We've got three loops going in here. Um, made it pretty easy with all the guys here doing it. I'm just rolling out the tubing. I got a little cold. I got a hoodie on now. I got that black hoodie on. But we buy these this tubing and... Uh, and a thousand foot rolls and a few people have asked me about the tubing if it has numbers on it for the footage and yes it does have numbers on it for footage um, I get it at uh, at supply house online it's called supply house I find they they'll deliver right to my house so that's where I get this tubing it's an oxygen barrier tubing um, which you want oxygen make sure you have oxygen barrier tubing when you do uh, infrared radiant heat as, uh, that'll keep the oxygen out of the tubing and won't end up uh, making your boiler rust especially if you had like a cast iron boiler or something if you ever hooked it up to a cast iron boiler all the oxygen gets into the tubing so you want an oxygen barrier tubing and uh, I think we're just finishing up the third loop here and I got a couple of my buddies putting uh, foam around the perimeter there we got two inches of foam around the perimeter of the barn too to insulate it, keep it insulated. And you can see we put the, I don't think I videoed it, but we threw, we threw plastic down, vapor barrier guys, underneath the foam. So we put our plastic down, then we put the four by eight sheets of, this is polystyrene insulation. It's two inches thick. Um, that's what you want underneath it. Or you want an inch and a half of spray foam. You don't want any uh, fake, you know, blanket products that claim that, you know, they'll be good for uh, radiant heat. You don't want anything like that. You want 
either two inches of polystyrene, that's a closed cell insulation board, or you want at least an inch and a half of closed cell spray foam, guys. You don't want open cell. Anything open cell is going to absorb water. So we got the tubing all down, guys. Um, that's me and uh, Trevor zipping around here on our uh, sliders. I'm finally getting a little bit better with these slider boards. Um, I find that they don't work that good on the first pass because um, they sink in too much. And they, they stick too much, but this is like our second pass. I did the first pass around the knee boards on my foam boards that are sitting right there. You can see them right there. I just set my boards by them. And uh, so you do the, I do the first pass with them because they don't stick and uh, I don't sink in as bad. And then we, on the second hit, we end up using those, those steel slider um, pans, the knee board sliders. I haven't used them very much, but I'm getting better at it. Trevor there in the yellow, he's pretty good on them. He's a young guy, but he's doing really good learning. He's got a little bit of concrete experience. Mostly a carpenter, but he's really taken on to the masonry, so that's good. He did around all these pipes by hand, which was nice for me. I didn't have to mess with it. He pretty much did all around them. So that worked out good. I think that was the second pass, guys, with the power trowel. Then I'm just going to hit this edge here. It's kind of nice because you got some edges that you don't have to be on the knee boards when you pour them in sections like this. So we're going to do this second section in the next video the same way we did the first section. We're going to pull in and use that pipe just like we did. Guys, if you like this video so far, do me a favor and go down and smash the like button for me. That will help me out on YouTube and uh, they'll start recommending my videos more. So I can help people out, teach them what I know about concrete here. I've been doing it for 30 years, guys. Anyways, uh, if you guys are new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Ron Bond. I have a company called Bondo Built Construction. And guys, we do tons of this concrete stuff on YouTube. And uh, we do other stuff besides concrete. But all summer long, we're doing these concrete floors and in-floor radiant heat. We do a lot of new Dura foundations. I have enough videos on there. I have over 100, 130 videos on YouTube, and a lot of them are trying to help people how to build your own basement or do your own concrete slab or your own in-floor radiant heat in your house. So uh, check it out, guys, and if you like the channel, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and uh, share it on social media with your friends, and uh, that'll help me out a ton. Thanks again, and you guys that are on there already, Thanks for the support again. Um, great stuff. Thanks for the comments. Um, anything, any questions you got, make sure you hit me up. Anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. I'm just shining this thing out and uh, going to make the next video here for you. Take care. Thanks.